told the story, excuse me, I'll get you in a minute, but he always told the story that uh, his, my, my, uh, one of my sisters, uh, the, the uh, father-in-law of one of my sisters was wanting to buy a radio station for the son, my sister's husband, and dad said, don't do it, it will never make any money. <laughs> and of course, radio kept that game back big. <laughs> No, uh, I was at uh, Syracuse University uh, going through your father's uh, archives a couple of years ago. And he kept his uh, file cards uh, with uh, what, he, what he learned on uh, particular stories. And uh, they're in with the uh, folders of the particular stories. And he was consistently making something like Twenty-eight to forty dollars per story in 1922, 1923, mm -hmm. which was actually quite good at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing: um, he was, he, and it's again in the book when he talks about when he was writing all these for Love Story magazine. He was making big money then. What happened though in the in the depression? You if, and you, you I've, I've got some of it in there, as the magazines folded, as things went bad, they went bankrupt, they went here and there, they didn't get paid. He said, I remember he said once, I sold a lot of stories during the Depressions, but I didn't get paid for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he might have sold them for such and such. And then, um, what's his name, I have a, a memory lapse, it's in the book, a um, well-known writer who, who sued one, of, but for not paying, sued one of the, one of the magazine people. That's that's all in there. Some people were notorious for not paying. In fact, for a long time in the early, uh, amazing, he didn't sell anything to them. He did afterwards because at, the, at that time they weren't paying. So you had to sue them to get your money. No, they, it was not uh, the 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 the, um, the big money. Oh, and of course. He, I don't think he ever had one in there, but if you could sell the Playboy, you got $5,000, you know, that was big in those times. Uh, Esquire, he had a couple stories in Esquire, they paid well. But basically, um, in the, that was, again, I'm talking about the 50s and so forth. But he loved, he never gave up to science fiction, he's got, he wrote an article about it, it's, let's call it a hobby, and he just really loved it. And it's interesting. I hope he sees somehow that people are still loving it too. <laughs> Do you have any sense of how many stories your father wrote? I mean, well, other people have estimated 1,500 or, you know, mm. a, a, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stories <laughs> when you go in. I didn't count the bibliography. In fact, I thought, you know, they keep talking 1,500. Somebody's going to count the bibliography and it's going to come up and say, they were. 1573, or there were only 1329, or I know, there's always somebody going to do that. <laughs> One estimate is 5,000 individual pieces. That includes uh, the uh, japes and uh, sayings in the. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Given that you I, haven't, I haven't seen what you're talking about, where he estimated what he wrote down, what he made for each story. I haven't seen that. I'll have to see it from you. Uh, well, I didn't record that. Mm -hmm. But I did record, I did have them Xerox something like uh, $300 uh, worth of uh, material. Mm -hmm. I had gotten permission from uh, uh, one of your sisters and the agency mm -hmm. to bring out a uh, print-on-demand collection of his early pre-1923 stories, mm -hmm. uh, which would already be out in paperback, except that my uh, uh, health collapsed. So now they're coming out on Kindle. Oh, well, okay. Well, I'll and talk to you about that and find out. My sister, uh, who is not on the book, um, not for a reason, I mean, not for any strange reason, but it just happened that I was uh, uh, working on this, and I, I was making a trip to London to visit my sister who lives there. And I said, I've decided to write this memoir for the family, I thought, and maybe it's something, you know, you'd like to be involved in. And she said, well, I have all these letters he wrote me in college and after I moved to England, and I have every, I saved every one of them. 
So there, a lot of them, that's kind of a skeleton to the book that I think adds to it because you see what he was writing to her and, and you can see it as she goes along. Uh, but, the, but my other sister lived in Gloucester, Virginia and when, after my mother died, then she, uh, you know, worked with him in the agent. So my other, through her choice, my other sisters and I really did not get involved in that. Probably a good idea. You don't <laughs> want too many people on it. But we really did not have anything to do other than, than you know, signing and asking and whatnot. But we kind of listened to what she uh, had said. So she did, of course, have to get permission from everybody for someone to, to publish. And then the, the agent, uh, uh, you know, of course, would have to um, say that was okay too. So I really don't know, uh, I don't remember. She, I probably heard you were going to do something, but I really, you know, don't remember anything about it. But well, the way I'm glad you guys are going to uh, set everything up because I'll be able to uh, add something from your uh, memoir. Mm -hmm. Very good, yes. I look forward to that. When he was at, uh, when he was right, when he wrote that, the, those uh, pieces for the smart set, and you, you were in Virginia, and uh, Mencken was in Baltimore. Did they have any contact? No, well, here's, he wasn't in Virginia then. Um, he, he, it was very important to him, his Virginia history and Virginia mm -hmm. heritage. And he was born in Norfolk, and he was in, uh, when he was about 13, 14, is when they left Norfolk. All the other family was in Norfolk and, and, and Suffolk, all the family. I did not myself know this until late in his life. He never, he, it was always Virginia, Virginia, Virginia. I did not know that he spent as much time, or his mother spent as much time, as they did in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, I did know that he was there because he talked about being there with, with his mother when he was like 17, 18, 19. Uh, but I, it was kind of went through. I don't know what happened there. These are one of these family mysteries. How they got to uh, Newark, I would, I suspect that uh, my mother had, my mother told me something. My mother said he was uh, a, a bank auditor at that time, so he's probably looking for. He was sixty some years old, you see, and he, and he'd worked twenty five years for the Norfolk and Southern Railroad as paymaster, and uh, so he loses his job. <laughs> So and in uh, Norfolk and Southern in Norfolk, this is a this is a, a big this is like a steel mill shutting down. So he um, was probably he may have gone to Newark because um, uh, the his older brother Tom's older say Tom Will's older brother um, uh, got a job there. Then I found them very briefly in New York, and this is when I realized that he stopped going to school, because the census has him going to school in New York and has an address for them. But then the father disappears. This is 1910. The father disappears. I picked the father up back in New York as a single man in <coughs> 1920. And then later than that, he... he uh, Came, uh, developed uh, dementia of some kind uh, and lived with his, his daughter for a while uh, in Virginia. But uh, they, um, I, I found him in, in New York, but then the rest of the family was in Newark. For some reason unknown to me, they did not go back to Norfolk, where my grandmother had all this family, uh, or Portsmouth. And uh, they stayed in Newark, and my grandmother stayed in Newark for 17 years until George died. I have no idea why she did that. And then she went back to Portsmouth. I have no clue. Like, there are these little mysteries in the family. Uh, so these are the years that are really kind of interesting to look into. In these years when he was living in Newark, that's when he talks about his Greenwich Village years. He ta has stories about Greenwich Village. And uh, I, I didn't put in things that I couldn't document. Uh, like um, Charles MacArthur, Helen's Hayes, the playwright Helen Hayes, 